Delighted to say here we are in the National Stadium of Windsor Park, joined by Jerry Armstrong. Jerry, the progress is continuing. We're combating all the workers trying to get the, the stadium in shape for the World Cup qualifier. But before that, we're in Europe. Only a few days to go. Great excitement, Jerry. It's fantastic. And we've waited such a long time for this, Adrian. And uh, you know, 30 years is too long for me. I thought we would have qualified for a major championship before that. But listen, it's arrived. The team's in good shape. Our confidence is unbelievable. 11 games unbeaten. We're going in in healthy condition and we're underdogs, which is what I like. There's a word you use there, the team, which I really like. They are a team. They work hard for each other. They, they actually are well drilled, well disciplined, well organised by Michael O'Neill. It's absolutely, and it reminds me a lot of the camaraderie we had with the team back in the 80s that qualified for two World Cups. You know, and everybody knew their strengths and their weaknesses. We were hard to play against, we were hard to break down, and we could win games 1 0. This team's got the same attributes, I think, and Michael's instilled great belief and confidence into them. And I'm, I'm hoping and I'm believing that we can cause an upset. Jerry's well organised from the back out the whole way, and for the first time in a long time, we almost have. Instead of just Kyle Lafferty, we've got a couple of strikers who can actually score, who can find the net. Yeah, it's not just about Kyle Lafferty scoring goals, and it's about you know our set players. I've watched this in the qualifying, Adrian. You know, and I've watched Gareth McCauley scoring goals. And, and when we come up on set players, you've got you know we've got a lot of tall players. Johnny Evans is another one who's very good in the air. And on set players, we can cause a lot of problems. Now towards the end, where we're wondering who was going to score the goals if if it wasn't going to be. Uh, uh, one of the centre halves or the centre forward. Steve Davis pops up with two goals. Oh. I was watching his form for Southampton towards <laughs> the end of the season. He scored a couple against my old club Spurs. So, I mean, we've got players who are just hitting form at the right time. Jerry, the Euros too, such immense interest. You know, we've got Wales, we've got England, we've got the Republic as well there with Martin too. There's huge interest in mother where you look. There is. I'm so pleased for Martin as well. You know, as my ex teammate and captain of the 82 squad, you know, he's done it really hard and uh, he had to work hard to get through in the qualifiers. And, you know, I'm really pleased for him and Roy and the rest of the team. And I'd love to see both the sides do really well. And uh, Wales. You know, they're a well-organised team and they're in the same group as, as England. Now, that's going to be a, a, a bit of a surprise for a few people because, you know, England are a very good side. I think they've got some good players, but, you know, the world-class players I'm looking at, Gareth Bale is a world-class player. I'm watching him every week for Real Madrid. You know, you could have Wales maybe and England qualifying out of that group, which would be fantastic. Jerry, we've done a bit of work for McLean's as well, obviously, and they have the various odds up. But it's fair enough to say that the European Championships Seven or eight teams are capable of winning this. Easy. Everybody talks about the, the home nation, France, but no Karim Benzema and no Rafael Varane, the, the centre half who's at Real Madrid and who's world class. And Benzema is a proven goal scorer. A lot of pressure going to be on Griezmann, Anton Griezmann, who missed that penalty in the in the Champions League final. He's a quality player, but there's going to be a lot of pressure on him and uh, Payet from West Ham. But they're still a good side. But what about Belgium? What about Spain? Spain's still a good team. Spain's Under the got radar some strikers. Almost, you know, yeah. so many players been there, done that, and bought the T-shirt. Listen, they've got some really good players. They've got a lad who I've watched uh, at a wreath playing for uh, Athletic Bilbao all season. 36, 37 goals this year. You know, he's a prolific goal scorer. He's 34, 35, but he's still hitting the back of the net. And they've got some quality midfield players. They've got two or three world-class goalkeepers. I watched. Uh, Jared Piquet playing the Copa del Rey final the other week for Barcelona. What a performance he put in, along with Andres Iniesta. Nobody could get the ball off Iniesta. He is still a brilliant player. So watch out for Spain and watch out for a lot of other sides. You know, there's it's a wide open one. I think any one of eight or nine could win it. Well, Jerry, how would you assess, you know, the Republic and how would you assess Northern Ireland? The, the Republic are getting in as underdogs, just like Northern Ireland are. But sometimes I always feel that if it's better if you're the underdog. There's not a, an awful lot of pressure on you and there's less expectancy. And then that's when you can surprise them. And it's, that's why the opening games are so important. Northern Ireland's opening game against Poland. If we can take a point out of that match against the likes of Lewandowski and Krakowiak, then I think... Coming into the Ukraine game, we can still cause an upset. And it means when you go to play Germany, who haven't been performing too well, they got beaten there last week by Slovakia, 3-1 uh, at home. Northern Ireland can go and get a result there. We can beat anybody. <laughs> Jerry, as always, a pleasure. Thanks, Kip. Thank you.